Best Irish music on irishradio.org with Jerry Byrne. One of the greatest iconic figures of country music and indeed uh, popular music from back in the 60s and the 70s was a gentleman called uh, Glenn Campbell. Uh, now, the uh, probably the one of his biggest, biggest tits and uh, certainly the biggest one in Ireland was the uh, iconic song Rhinestone Cowboy. Now, uh, many of his other tracks, uh, which were huge hits as well, uh, was uh, Universal Soldier, Gentle on My Mind, By the Time I Get to Phoenix, Dreams of the Everyday Housewife, Wichita Linesman, Southern Nights and many many more. He had his own coast-to-coast uh, television show uh, and in the USA, which was uh, indeed shown uh, right across in uh, Ireland, the UK, and indeed across Europe. It's a real pleasure to speak to his daughter, Debbie Campbell. Debbie, how are you? Good, Jerry. Thanks for having me. Debbie, listen, it's lovely to speak to you. And uh, it's, uh, it, it, I, uh, Glenn, you, your dad, I mean, was an, an absolutely huge international star. Yes, he was. He was definitely a legend, an icon, and just an all-around great, good guy. Yes, and he, uh, I mean, he was he was regarded, I saw one of the documentaries, I mean, there were many, many programs uh, done about him, and uh, one of the documentaries, I remember them saying, uh, he had everything. He had the, the voice, right. the looks, the, the musical, uh, you know, talent, the charisma, he had the whole lot. Yep, exactly. I wish I could quote the exact quote that Merle said, but Merle Haggard said, God gave, put all that talent into one man. Yes, yes, indeed. Truly, yeah. truly, truly iconic. Now, uh, uh, you were born in... And, a- it's, and it's funny that I'm talking, it's funny that I'm talking to you today, because it's Dad's birthday today. Right, right. Uh, he would have been 85 years old today, yep. Indeed, indeed. May, uh, may he rest in peace. Now, uh, you were born yourself in Albuquerque, New Mexico, uh, to uh, Diane, uh, your mum, and uh, uh, Glenn, your dad, in uh, 1987. Now, you joined your father's show, and uh, for 24 years, uh, you toured the world with him to uh, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, Tasmania, Bermuda, as well as uh, numerous tours of the USA. Yes, absolutely. And loved every minute of it. We just We finally got to know each other, you know. Yes, yes, indeed. Um, as a daughter and father relationship, you know, because he was always on the road when I was younger, and I didn't live with him. And then it's how ironic that I ended up living on the road with him for like twenty-four years. Indeed, indeed, uh, that must have been a, it, it. Must have been a great uh, learning curve uh, as well for you musically to 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 see him perform, and uh, you must have picked up an awful lot of uh, things. Absolutely, and it was such. Oh my gosh! Every time we'd step on stage and sing, it just was blissful you know i mean dad and i just loved having a good time and we had a good time on stage and off right excellent now uh, during your time on the road i believe you recorded many duets uh, with your dad including united we stand let it be me little green apples as well as uh, multiple recordings of uh, uh, glenn's uh, live uh, with uh, the south dakota symphony which uh, were released on cd and oh yeah that that was a great that was so fun that was a fun concert I'd well believe it. It's, uh, it's, it was uh, really cold. It was really cold there. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, okay. I remember that. I remember that, but... Now, you, you've actually, you, yourself, you, you're following you, you, your dad's footsteps, and uh, your, your appreciation for uh, the country music landed you with your own show in Branson in Missouri in the Roy Clark Theatre. Yeah, I had a morning show there for a while, and then uh, moved to another theatre. I think it was... Uh, Ray Price Theater, we moved over to, and as well as singing in Dad's show and um, still doing my flight attendant work. So I was like, and then raising my kids. So I was busy all the time, all the time. I bet. And uh, I believe there's actually the Glen Campbell Good Time Theater. Yes. Yep. Dad had the Glen Campbell Good Time Theater. And we also, we performed at the Grand Palace, and then we ended up later years at the Andy Williams Moon River Theatre. Excellent, excellent stuff. Uh, now, uh, you, you, your musical highlights were uh, hosting the Jerry uh, Lewis uh, MDA Telethon. Oh, yes, that was so much fun. Oh, my gosh. And, and, and at that time when we did it, there were so many headlining artists that were still in Branson, like Tony Orlando, um, Mel Tillis, you know, so... So they would all come to the theater and they would do their part for the for the telethon, you know, from Dad's theater. And I think one time we did it from the Grand Palace, seems like. But that was so much fun hosting and, you know, I had to set up catering for the food for backstage. 
um, you know, as well as getting the artists that we're going to perform. And I, I love organizing like that. It's a lot of fun. I bet it is. I bet it is. Now, uh, you're also an author and you've published uh, your own book, uh, Life with My Father, Glenn Campbell. Yes, that was kind of like therapy for me because it was a, a time when uh, dad got his diagnosis with Alzheimer's. My stepmom came into the picture and started changing his, the whole world of every everyone, you know, even including my dad, when she never really had been a part of on the road with us all those years, you know, except for when we were in Branson for any good length of time. And I just had to write down, you know, wow, um, I didn't grow up with dad. It starts back in the early, you know, years. And my, it basically outlines my coming to find my father and having a relationship with him through all of the fans, through all of the business contacts, through his job um, of entertaining everyone in the world, um, through all the multiple marriages. And it just outlines through my book of how I ended up with dad on the road and we became best friends through all of that, you know. Indeed, that's, so that's a, basically what it was about. Right, so it sounds absolutely, sounds absolutely fascinating. Uh, it really does, and uh, definitely, I think for anybody who's a fan of uh, uh, Glenn Campbell, I think it's a, uh, you know, it would be a, a very interesting read. Right. Everyone said that's read it, liked it, and said it's like sitting down and talking with me over a glass of wine, you know. Right, right. Uh, your uh, your dad's, uh, you know, it, when it was a major, major shock. Uh, I mean, to his fans, I know it, it could be nothing towards to the uh, the the, the rock hard hit which uh, you took. But I mean, to his fans, were were very, very shocked. Uh, you know, when when he was diagnosed, and uh, he he still actually, even after he was diagnosed, he still did performing. He still appeared on uh, TV shows. He did. Yep, he sure did. He kept going. Um, you know, some days were good, some days were not so good. But And unfortunately, I wasn't with him in the later part of those days, um, you know. But I did go and visit him quite a bit at the home in Nashville um, that he was in. And, uh, you know, it was heart heartbreaking to watch him, the man that I knew, you know, yes. go into that shell. It was very... I mean, it doesn't matter if you understand Alzheimer's or not, or if you've read all the steps to Alzheimer's or whatever. It's still hard to accept when you're right there with your loved one. Uh, well, yes, I can. I can well, well uh, believe that and imagine it must be truly, uh, truly horrific uh, to put it mildly. Now you've recorded. Yes. You've recorded, Debbie. Uh, one of your uh, your late father's uh, one of his iconic hits. By the time I get to Phoenix. I did. It just kind of started as a fluke. My friend Bobby Wilson, who is the son of Jackie Wilson, said, you know, I hadn't sang since I quit singing with Dad in 2011. I hadn't sang anymore. And it's been about three years and three or four years. And Bobby said, Deb, you've got to come come to Nashville to my guy, Tony, Tony Mantor with Plateau, Plateau Music. And I said, I just don't think I can sing anymore, Bobby. And he goes, come on, just come to Nashville. So I did. I'm talking to Tony. I said, Tony goes, I want to do a CD. I go, I don't know if I can do a CD, you know? And he goes, well, then give me three songs. So I picked three songs, and after we recorded them, it's like, wow, I think I like doing this again, <laughs> you know? So then we ended up recording the whole CD, and I thought, well, I want to make a theme to my CD. So I thought, well, I'll do a tribute to Dad. And uh, so I'll pick all the songs of mine that were favorites that Dad did, and they might not necessarily be all that one of a hit, you know? But, of course, Phoenix was, and Phoenix was really special because that's where it all started for me with Dad when I sang with him at the State Fair here in Phoenix, Arizona. So it was fitting that that would be the title, you know, the, the first track off of it that I would want to release. Um, and some of the other songs are, you know, I, I did record an Alzheimer's song because I basically lived it, lived that song going to visit Dad at the home. Um, and then there's another one that's not one of Dad's songs, was The Way We Were, which was Barbara Streisand, and that was mine and Dad's favorite female singer, and I just loved the song, and so I included that, and that became the title of my CD, The Way We Were. So, Excellent. And there's a lot of great songs that I love that Dad did that people might not recognize as hits, but I'm sure if they were an avid Glenn Campbell fan, they would know these songs. Yes, yes, indeed. And the, the where, you know, uh, there were so many, many people who were avid uh, Glenn Campbell fans uh, right around the world. Right. Now you're yes. you're releasing you're releasing over this side of the pond on the seventh of May. Uh, that song by the time I get to Phoenix is the album being released uh, later on. 
I think, I mean, that's up to my producer. I hope, I hope so. You know, I guess we'll just have to wait and see the kind of response, I guess. I don't know how that works in the music business, Jerry, because <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't on that side of it. You know, I was just dad's, dad's duet partner and, and bandmate, you know, so I don't know how the ifs and ands of the music business what happens at this point? Right, okay, okay. Excellent stuff. I'll have to say, you're well done on the recording. It is very, very good. And it was huge shoes. Thank you. Huge shoes to, uh, uh, you know, to uh, sort of uh, feel in any way because uh, he was such a, a true uh, icon of music. And uh, well done on doing it. And, right. Uh, sounds, sounds a very interesting album you've got, Debbie. Thank you. And yeah, now, now I'm, I mean... Our last gig that we did was last March because of the pandemic, but I do a tribute show to Dad. So it's all his music in the show, and I have bandmates that do the songs like that I don't want to do, like Southern Nights, you know, songs that I just don't think I would do justice to. And But it's all Dad's music, and I've got video, and we all tell stories, and it's a great intimate tribute show, and so I hope that we can bring it to the UK soon. Indeed, that will be that will be absolutely fabulous. And uh, as soon as as soon as they say it's safe to do so, as uh, right around the world, it's uh, no different. I know uh, where you are in the US uh, to the way it is here with right. uh, every single every singer and uh, live musician or any any live artist whatsoever uh, not doing a whole pile at the minute with the way things are. I know it. It's sad. So sad. Yeah. But fingers crossed, we shall we shall get we shall get there. Every single pandemic which has ever came along has uh, gone again, and uh, this will be no different. So uh, we we right. we'll br- and this will be left behind in the wind. Yeah, we'll look back on this years down the road. Yeah, we certainly will. Well, we certainly won't forget these years, Debbie. Right, exactly. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. Debbie, listen, it's been lovely to speak to you. It really has. I listen. I wish you all the luck in the world. It's been fascinating to speak to you, uh, you know, about your, your dad and indeed uh, uh, yourself. Thanks a million for joining me. Thank you so much, Jerry, and you have a wonderful day.